Atomic Theory, Isotopes, and Radioactive Decay Isotopes and Mass Number Before we talk about radioactivity, we need to be sure we know what isotopes and mass number are. Isotopes are different atoms of a particular element that have the same number of protons. That would mean they have the same atomic number. But they do have different numbers of neutrons. One example is carbon. Carbon has three isotopes, carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Carbon-12 is the most common. You'll notice that all three isotopes of carbon have an atomic number of six. This is also the number of protons they have. In standard atomic notation, the atomic number, and the number that is the number of protons, is written underneath this number. In standard atomic notation, the atomic number or number of protons is written below the mass number. In this case the mass number is 12. With carbon 13 the mass number is 13 and with carbon 14 the mass number is 14. This number is simply the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. That would tell us that carbon 12 has 6 protons which we know from here and it has six neutrons because it has to equal to 12. Carbon 13, if we use the same formula, protons plus neutrons, it's going to have six protons because that's what makes it carbon. If it had a different number of protons it wouldn't be carbon. But it has to come out to 13 so this tells us that it has seven neutrons. And carbon 14, protons plus neutrons is once again six from here and 8. And 6 and 8 is 14. So we know that carbon 14 has one more neutron than carbon 13 and, and two more neutrons than carbon 12. So remember that the mass number is equal to the number of protons plus neutrons. Mass number equals the number of protons, which is also the atomic number, plus the number of neutrons. Okay, now we're ready to talk about radioactivity. Radioactivity is the release of high energy particles and rays of energy from a substance as a result of changes to the nuclei of its atoms. We can use radioactivity to improve our lives such as through medical diagnoses and treatments and by generating electricity. The stream of high energy fast moving particles or waves that's found in our environment is called natural background radiation and it can interact with an atom and turn it into an ion. The source of natural background radiation is the Big Bang that basically started out the universe as we know it now and the two fellows in the picture are the people who discovered background radiation. So radiation refers to high energy rays and particles emitted by radioactive sources. Radiation includes all wavelengths on the electromagnetic spectrum and hopefully you remember learning about this. The only wavelengths that we actually can detect is this little narrow range of wavelengths called visible light. If you take a look at the whole spectrum, what you should remember is that to the left of visible light we have very long wave radiation but it gets shorter as it approaches visible light and on the other side of visible light the wavelengths become even shorter and shorter and shorter. Whoops, that would, should, should look like that. Um, gamma radiation actually is radiation that produces the shortest wave and the highest energy radiation. And on the other end of the spectrum, a long wave, radio, TV, etc., these, these produce the lowest energy radiation. And as you know, radiation like ultraviolet and x-rays and of course gamma rays, these all can penetrate our skin and do damage to our DNA. It's because they have high energy. On the other hand, on the left hand side, these forms of energy, they actually cannot penetrate our skin, uh, but in high enough intensity they can do damage. And so you can get burns from infrared, which is like heat, or uh, excessive microwaves also can be damaging to our cells in other ways. Radioactive decay. 
the nucleus of a radioactive element is unstable, they lose energy by emitting radiation until they become stable non-radioactive atoms, usually of a different element. So this is different than anything we've seen so far in chemistry where we actually have one type of atom changing into another type of atom. Radioisotopes are isotopes that are capable of radioactive decay. So if you think back to the three forms of carbon, carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14, carbon-14 actually is an unstable form of carbon. It has an unstable nucleus and it decays to nitrogen-14, meaning that it actually changes to the element nitrogen. Our bodies contain all three different forms of carbon, but only one atom in one trillion is of the unstable form that can release radiation. Three types of radiation. The first form of radiation that we're going to look at is alpha radiation. Alpha radiation is caused by alpha particles and alpha particles are simply the nucleus of helium. Two protons and two neutrons. So it looks something like this. We drew it symbolically. You can see that there's four particles there, so it has a mass number of four. These are actually quite big, and as a result, they're pretty slow moving and not very penetrating. If you put a piece of paper in front of a beam of these or a ray of these, it actually wouldn't be able to penetrate through. The, the paper would actually stop it. So alpha decay occurs when an element breaks down into a different element and produces an alpha particle. Okay, so an example of this would be when radium-226 decays to radon-222 plus an alpha particle. And the balanced equation is written below. You can see the symbol for radium showing the mass number of 226 and the atomic number of 88 and it decays to radon which has a mass number of 222 and atomic number of 86 and it also decays to uh, an alpha particle which is just a helium nucleus. So it has two protons and four as the mass number because of the two protons plus the two neutrons that we saw earlier. Uh, another way of drawing this is to actually use the symbol alpha instead of the symbol for helium. The important thing to notice about this equation is that it is a balanced equation. So if you check the total number of protons on the left side of the area, arrow, 88, it should be equal to the total number of protons on the right side of the arrow, 86 plus 2. And if you look at the mass number, which is 226, that needs to be equal to the mass numbers on the right side of the arrow, 222 plus 4 and they are equal. So this equation is balanced. Let's take a look at beta radiation. Beta radiation. In beta radiation, beta particles are produced and a beta particle is simply one electron. So it has a charge of minus one. Because electrons are tiny, they are very small and these particles are small and they're very fast moving and they're actually more penetrating to the point where they would actually penetrate that paper that the alpha particles couldn't penetrate but they can't penetrate a thin sheet of foil so they can be stopped fairly easily. Uh, beta decay occurs when a neutron breaks down or decays into a proton and an electron and as you know electrons weigh almost nothing. But what this does to the atom where the decay is taking place is it gives it one more proton and that means that it becomes the next element on the periodic table. The electron shoots out of the nucleus or shoots out of the, the atom and it takes with it a lot of energy and that's basically the nature of these rays that are produced. That is actually the, the electron stream as they leave the uh, nucleus. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, we can see how carbon-14 decays to nitrogen-14 and we talked about this earlier when we, we uh, discussed the different isotopes of carbon. And if you recall, carbon-14 is an unstable isotope of carbon. So it decays to nitrogen-14. If we look really closely on the periodic table here, we'll see that carbon is right next to nitrogen and nitrogen has one more proton than carbon has. So if carbon has six protons, nitrogen has seven protons 
protons and that extra proton came from the decay of one of carbon carbon's neutrons that turned into a proton and a beta particle or an electron so the way we show this as an equation we start with carbon 14 which has six protons and eight uh, neutrons. One of those neutrons changes into a proton and that's why we form the next element with seven protons. But the total number of particles in the nucleus, protons plus neutrons, remains the same. We still have 14 of them there. What does get produced is an electron and remember that's the electron that shoots out and produces the uh, the beta radiation. This is one way to show it as an electron with of course a negative charge. Another way to show it is as a beta particle with a negative charge. Okay let's take a look at the other example. Iodine-131 decays to xenon-131 and a beta particle and in this one you can see a similar pattern. You can see that iodine uh, has an atomic number of 53 but it decays to the next element xenon which has an atomic number of 54. The total number of protons plus neutrons doesn't change in the nucleus and that's why the mass number stays the same. However, uh, one of those neutrons in iodine has changed into a proton. That's why we, we have xenon because it has an atomic number of 54. It has one more proton. In that decay process where the neutron changes to a proton, we also produce the electron. So it's the same pattern as above. Uh, you should notice that the number of protons increases by one. You should notice that the total mass number does not change and that an electron is formed and that's our beta particle. So the mass number stays the same, the atomic number increases by one. Gamma radiation. Gamma radiation is caused by high energy short wave waves. There are actually no particles being produced and so there's no mass and no charge. Uh, the highest energy very penetrating form of electromagnetic radiation or waves and it's blocked by lead or concrete. So if we had a piece of paper it would not stop gamma radiation. If we had a piece of foil it wouldn't stop gamma radiation. You'd need a nice big thick of piece of lead or concrete or even just a lot of soil before that radiation would actually be stopped. So of course this can penetrate our bodies quite easily as well and cause damage to our DNA. Uh, gamma decay results when energy is redistributed within the nucleus and high energy gamma ray rays are given off. Um, the isotope falls from a high energy state to a lower energy state that's more stable. In this example, high energy nickel 60 can decay to nickel 60 by gamma decay. The little asterisk shows that this is high energy nickel. So high energy nickel decays to a lower energy nickel by giving off some energy. And because it's not giving off any particles, the total number of protons doesn't change. The total number uh, for the atomic mass or the mass number does not change. The only thing that's given off is energy that has no mass and it's given off as gamma radiation. And that's the little symbol for gamma there, right there, that funny looking Y. The way to recognize gamma radiation equations is that we actually have the same element that we started with and we have a gamma ray or maybe more gamma rays given off. Let's see, you might want to check out these links on YouTube, three fairly short videos. The uh, first one shows a demonstration of the pen penetrating ability of three types of radiation. The second one shows the same thing only much more quickly and it's in an animated form. And the third one is a nice explanation of radioactive decay for alpha and beta particles, but unfortunately not gamma particles.